Hey, 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 welcome back. It's Mizu again. Look, I got a few things I want to run past y'all. Um, there's the 420 somewhere playlist. Um, a lot of people don't know I have a discussion tab on my page. So yeah, go to the YouTube page. I don't know how most of y'all are using it. Hopefully at least 1% of you are on PC but or phone. You can do discussion tabs on phone. But that said, I need your help with the 420 playlist. Like the 420 somewhere playlist, I'm missing a bunch of songs and I don't have time to go back and listen to a bunch of music I used to listen to in elementary and middle school. So help me out here. Um, that said, let's get to the show. Pause. presidency has been a clusterfuck and I keep saying like a lot of people are going to go to prison and now a lot of people are throwing fucking people <coughs> the bus people are trying to do what they can to survive save their own necks <coughs> but yeah it's like this shit's been crazy how's your week been though? it's been like really busy like I've pretty much within like the last like, once I've been able to maintain at least six hours of sleep, you yeah. know? But, like, it's I've just been super busy. Whether if it's, like, my side hustle or my job, it's, like, one or the other. Yeah, so you do have some moonlighting gig. That's, that's dope. I'm glad you're happy and doing that and whatever it is is safe. Oh, yeah. Plus, I mean, we did mention my friend Betty last week and... The last time, and... How was Betty? She's good, you know, and I, I ran across <coughs> her actually quite recently. <coughs> I sort of asked her, like, is there anything that we should expect from the Articles of Impeachment this week? <laughs> but of I'm... course, she always, she always tells me what she always says. I can't tell you until it's 24 hours in advance. Uh, yeah, so... Time travelers aside, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Myself. You're doing good. Um, How was your your job today? Yeah, my my group was was good. Um, I thought I had a guest tonight. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's so my group is very interesting because there are three Alexes in it. Myself being one of them. Um. Alex P. Um. There's another Alex, and then there's Alex. Who goes by Alexi sometimes. Everyone is super cool, super chill. Um, in fact, both of the other Alexes smoke. <laughs> so well, that's good. That's that's really good. I I really like it. Oh, as well as like we love to like want we want to interview people and we want like people to chill with us. Yes, that's another thing. So I no, I I need to control my volume. Yes. But, Another thing, I got, I, I, okay, so I posted a Craigslist ad for guests for the podcast. Did you get any weird responses? Please tell me you got, like, really weird responses. I didn't get anything weird, actually. One's a writer. Oh, cool. Which is, that's really cool. I, I love to speak with writers, a political type. Yeah. So that's always good. The other one is, like, kind of a jackpot, kind of a gold mine, a dream catch. He's a hemp farmer. <sighs> Yes, um, that makes me super, super happy. That is awesome. Yes, that, we need that the That my farmer. small little weed podcast uh, could get someone who's actually a professional in the industry, someone who grows professionally for our legalized growers here. Exactly. Someone who came in and taught these no name, no fucking talent, hack ass, still in scientists <laughs> and shit. How to grow weed properly. Yeah. Not weed, sorry. Industrial hemp. Industrial, Industrial hemp, hemp for CBD products. Yes. Which I am totally okay with because you know he knows a thing or two about growing real shit. Like, oh, so, yes. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm fortunate. I, I'm feeling good. And Craigslist is always a gamble. It and is. It's, it's always a gamble. And I've, I've done lots of shit on Craigslist. And I've never had a, anything bad happen. Knock on wood. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've had good luck too. Like, I met, uh, actually tripped with a guy at Craigslist. 
do tell. That one, okay, remember that guy that was just like kind of lonely that I told you about? Yeah, yeah. So that's, so I was trying to, so I'm too, so the reason why I have my side hustle now is because I am broke as fuck. And, you know, um, mainly because of the fact that I have like bills and stuff and, um, Bond Desk can only give me a certain amount of hours sometimes. And so it's kind of like, I, I don't have a place where I can like chill by myself or, an, or anything like that. An Airbnb at times, it looks cheap, but then the cleaning fee is like really, really high. Yeah, see, or, that's you know, why you don't make a mess. <laughs> so, <laughs> or you clean up after yourself. And so I was just like, okay, I'm going to like just see if someone on Craigslist would be willing. If they had space where I could just kind of like use it on my own, maybe I could pay them like 20 bucks a time and stuff <laughs> like that. So I posted that on Craigslist and that's where I met him. That's, that's so interesting that we have stories with Craigslist. I mean, I don't know. I also like, I also like used to like go on the, uh, how was it called? Misconnections. Cause I always kind of wanted to see if someone like wrote a misconnection post about me. Is that really narcissistic of me? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, because I had myself used to check misconnections and even posted on misconnections more than a few dozen times. But me being, me being, how do I, how do I put this? Me being a, a young, questioning male, questioning of my sexual identity. I, I definitely use Craigslist for hookups. <laughs> I definitely use Craigslist for your anonymous gay hookups. I did not do <clears throat> hookups with Craigslist. Um, Mainly because of the fact, like, I would I would know I would die. <laughs> like, I know a serial killer would definitely <laughs> want to get me. No, it, it's funny. Especially when, like, you do it and you get... Because, no, I did it while living in this house that we're in now. No way! I, 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 I did Craigslist hookups, <laughs> and they were literally within five, ten blocks of this house, two of them. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, then again, it's, I can't say much, because I'm just as much of a slut, but in a different way. But... <laughs> no, and... I don't know, it's like... I, I I don't know. I did it, and the first, the first like three were just for oral. Okay. I was like, I just got head from successful white businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, that that's that's my experiences with Craigslist. I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast before. No, I know, you I know, not. I'm not with you, but on the one back with cello oh i i may have <laughs> but yeah there's there's just so much it's things are crazy and weird and fun like i'm doing great takashi 69 is probably gonna do okay in prison i heard about that because he's probably going to be in, in not in gen pop He's, oh really? I don't think he's gonna be in Gen Pop. Is he gonna be with like uh like he's gonna the, be in the special pop or PC? I, PC, okay. So my brother my brother Craig, he was locked up for fifteen and a half years. Oh wow. Um it's a long story, crime didn't he he didn't commit. But in his last like two years, because people will try to steal your date. And yeah. what that is is like they'll do cause a situation, a problem where you don't get out in time. Yeah. And so those last two years, he was in PC. And the name for PC is Punk City, because usually it's snitches or peop or child molesters, pe like protective custody. Yeah. Like PC Punk City. That, I think that's where he's gonna be. Mm. Like, R. Kelly's in PC himself. Well, yeah. That, and he, he's that's... asking to be put in a gin pop. And I'm like, okay, you're trying to commit suicide, I think. I like, either commit suicide or try to see if he has fans in the inside that believe him still. I, that's the thing. Like, because I'm pretty sure with protective custody, no one in that shit is 
like a fan of him. Maybe I don't know. Maybe if they're a child molester. Child molesters tend to be tend to friend child other other child molesters. <laughs> so you know. Maybe that's it. Maybe he wants to be. Maybe he doesn't want to be seen as a child molester. Maybe well, that's why he needs to go to Gen Pop. As a person that has lots of family members and associates who have been locked Actually, up. Actually, yeah, that makes sense. Child molesters, kitty touchers. Yeah. They don't care if you if you had sex with if you raped a seventeen year old girl or a infant child. Yeah. They will fuck you up. They will kill you for touching for messing with underage. If you're a rapist, they'll definitely fuck you up if you're fucking with women. Especially if you fuck with someone who's related to anyone locked up. Oh, wow. Like, <clears throat> I always knew that, like, that they would do that to, to it. I mean, look, say what you will about little, a lot of hardened criminals. When it comes to children... We all know it's not good. No one fucks with children. No one... You gotta be kind of a monster to fuck with children. Yeah, you're... You're you're, you're a literal monster to target kids. Because... Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I know there's, like, sometimes they'll even make special cases if people, like, target <coughs> heavily vulnerable groups. <coughs> Oh shit. So, yeah, that's Takashi. I, I, as soon as I kind of became a fan of him, and this is going back like four years. This is yeah, this is 2019. That's the first time I heard one of his songs like 2015. I was just like, he's kind of cool. He's kind of okay. I, I guess he. Oh, he's a blood. I mean, I'm not a blood, but. Okay, I'm not with all the gang gang shit, but his music's okay. His bars are okay. His bars are like, it's like his bars aren't getting like an A plus or mm. anything. They're not. His bars aren't anything special, but his, they get a solid passing C. Yeah, they get like pa passing C bars are good. Drake has a factory full of rappers with passing C bars. It's how he can win every fucking rap beef he gets into which if anyone from the OVO music factory is listening um, I want in I'm a good writer I just can't write for myself so yeah get at your boy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, I don't even know right now it's like this shit with Massachusetts is just making me laugh more and more every day oh what was that with Massachusetts um, Governor Charlie Baker bans the sale of flavored tobacco and vaping products, including yeah. menthol cigarettes. We talked about that last time, yeah. Yeah, and it's just it's just interesting because he keeps going on various news outlets saying that nothing he did is wrong, and I'm like, a lot of people are agreeing with him. Even people who who say that it's a racist thing are like. Yeah, this may be a little racist, but you're doing black people a favor. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head, as a as a person of color, as a person who smoked menthol cigarettes for 15 years, I'm like, yeah, but do you have to say it like that? It's like, just, just say it's a health thing. Just say you're trying to benefit everyone's health. And, and we're cool. It's like, just, just leave race out of it. Yeah. That, that's my big issue with things. It's like, why does race have to be a part of every fucking thing? Well, I mean, racism is still a big part of our culture. culture yes, but unfortunately. How, how can you say someone doing something for health is racist? Well, no, I, I think the thing I mean, is... Thing, and my, my gut reaction was, that's racist as fuck. That was my gut reaction myself, but after thinking about it and having clarity and processing and being like, yeah, yeah, I let my rational mind think, and I didn't go to Twitter with my, like, my, my lizard brain and be like, this is fucking racist, this is dumb. Like, no, I didn't yeah. do that. Yeah, no, with the menthol cigarettes, like, I mean, I did kind of think the same thing when you told me. <laughs> To be honest, but at the same time, though, I think it would have been more racist 
if it was like just the cities or the urban areas that were banned, yeah. like in Minneapolis. Like in Minneapolis. Yeah, because Minneapolis like, is a little racist. It's here. super racist. Like that's the thing. Like with Massachusetts, it's a statewide ban, so no one in the state can get it. But in Minnesota. You can only get menthol cigarettes in the suburb, suburban area, the rural areas. And liquor stores. And liquor stores. And I think tobacco stores too, right? Tobacco shops. Yes. yes. Um, it, it's funny because Murder Station converted their garage into a tobacco shop so they could still sell. And a lot of the, like gas stations, like a gas station off of um, Nicollet, not Nicollet, Lindale and Nicollet. Um, that little gas station there. They turned their their garage into a smoke sh- tobacco shop <laughs> because they haven't they, they <coughs> don't, they don't use their garages for tune-ups or repairs. Like, yeah, because like a lot of people t- have to like stick with the dealerships nowadays. Well, and... no, and a lot of those shops are like back in like the <laughs> they were built back in the twenties, the thirties, the forties. Yeah. So. Your your corner store gas station was a full service shop as well. Yeah, things have changed so much. Yeah, now there's a Valvoline, like every corner. No, yeah, and literally over south, there's a Valvoline or or some kind of auto shop. Like there's an auto shop in, every, in every uptown. Like, yeah, no, there's like three within like a three mile radius, like a mile apart from each other. Yeah, like there's. <clears throat> There's, there's so many. Like, there's a Bobby and Steve. Yeah, no, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of dope-ass places. Like, I support Bobby and so, Steve. So, that's how I know that I don't think it's intentionally racist with Massachusetts. Yeah, it, it's not intentionally racist. I feel like it's a it's one of those accidental racist things. And yeah. I feel like it's another thing. It's children. Cause yeah. As a person, as an adult who vapes, who, who buys products... Is like I look at a lot of these flavors and things. I'm like, there's no way this isn't marketed towards children. Especially like how the covers are too. The, all the breakfast cereals. Yeah. All the candies. It's like, those are cooey. What are you doing? Don't do that. I know you're trying to mar- market it to nostalgia, but that marketing to nostalgia is also marketing to children, and that is dangerous. And that is not what our industry needs. Yeah, that's the main thing. Like, we like, need I, a... I remember I got this one edible, and it had this little bear character on it. And I was just like, really? And granted, like, the bear character, like, had dreads, and it had a little bong in a hand. But in the same time, though, it's like, no, this is clearly very kid-friendly. Like, it could easily blend in with Wee Bear Bears. Yeah, no, that's that's so dumb. So now that we've been mm-hmm. kind of dumb, kind of fun. Yes. What? Okay. Um. Yeah. So let's dive back into um the water tower. <laughs> and that that's intentional verbiage because. Animaniacs is coming back. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, I loved that show so much. Like, I'm I'm so in love with um, HBO Max. I really want to get HBO Max when it comes out. Like, I really want to get it mainly because of the fact there's going to be so much on it. Plus, uh, Adventure Time stuff's going to be on it well, from the continuation of the I'm, show. And I'm, I'm more interested in some of. The classic Warner Brothers live action movies. That too. Like, I feel like they've got a really, really <coughs> solid vault. <And> so, <laughs> yeah, well, their their originals are cool, but it's like their library series. Like their library series is dope. Um. Yeah. They're like. Like they've got, they're gonna have Barry, Barry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm, uh, I'm looking at it. And then we're gonna have chair. What is that? Big Little Lies. I'm not familiar with that movie. Big Little Lies. Oh, or, that, sorry. Uh, library series. Hold on. Like they're gonna have Big Little Lies and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, I'm excited for Curb Your Enthusiasm. I gotta finish that. Uh, why can't I not think of his name? 
Larry Sanders. That's what I was trying to think of, like, that one podcast when I was like, Seinfeld's writing partner. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I like him. <laughs> I, I think he has an interesting perspective on things, especially as being a Manhattan Jew. And they always have interesting perspectives on things. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not a diss. I fucking legitimately love Manhattan Jews. <laughs> but yeah, we got Deadwood, Entourage. Oh, fuck Entourage. Okay, continue. Game of Thrones, Insecure, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Wait. I, 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 I skipped a few. Yeah, we're... You, okay, stop it. Game of Thrones, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, West Wing, Pretty Little Wait, Liars. Where'd you see Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? On the LA Times list. I'm on the CNN business list. Well... Why are you not in the fun awkward doc? I am in the fun awkward doc, but when I hit it, it brings me to the LA Times article. But there's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole link down there that says CNN. Well, okay. Do you want me to hit the CNN or do you want me to hit the I'm highlighted the HBO Max? I'm on the CNN. Okay then. The CNN Ugh, has the. Quit being like that. <laughs> I thought I told you. You didn't tell me CNN. <laughs> Irritating. Irritate, irritate, irritate. I, I, I message you. Oh, I didn't send it. Oh! <laughs> oh! You hear that, guys? I didn't send it. Who doesn't fucking send a message? I thought they sent the message to you. I got distracted. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Well. Uh, you, no, no. But then again, I also did just type CNN. So even if I did... I, I should I I was I should have sent you the whole link. That's why I okay, really meant to so do. Okay, so are you looking at Max Originals? Yes, I'm down to HBO Library series. Oh, okay. So I know you're down to the HBO Library series, but does it say Max Originals at the top or is it lower? It said it's lower than Max Originals. Okay, it goes Max Originals. Is it HBO Originals? Then HBO Originals. And then HBO Library series. Yes, that's where I'm at. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm remembering Barry now. God yeah, it's damn all about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. You're giving me a weed headache. I hate weed headaches. <laughs> they make me feel weird. Stop that. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay, so we have Barry. I have no fucking clue what Barry is. It's about Barack. Oh, really? Yeah. Barack Obama. Is it like a documentary? It's a docuseries. Oh, wait, is that the one that was directed by Edward Norton? I think so. I don't want to say anything for sure. Uh. And then Big Little Lies. I have been wanting to see Chernobyl. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I have too. I really do like Chernobyl as a, as a story, as a history fact, as just a cautionary tale. Mainly because, like, also as well as, like, it's, it's, I, I guess, the, a lot of the information in the show, like, some of it was, like, hidden from the actual people who lived in Ukraine or something like that. Like, some facts, like, that were covered up or some shit or something like that. Like, it caused well, some controversy it, first that they weren't happy with. Well, no, it was not just the cover of, but it's, like... That was a nuclear catastrophe. Well, catastrophe, yeah. Yeah, that was a ecological disaster of a catastrophic level. And it's just like, there's just so many questions that need to be asked, that should be asked, that haven't been asked. And it's just, fiction surrounding it is always interesting. Documentaries, factual stuff about it. It's interesting. Like I know there's like animals there that have like multiple eyes. Yes, there there like, are there like, mutant animals. There out are there. fallout levels of mutant animals running yeah. around Chernobyl. It's like it's greatly infected the wildlife. Cause if you're not familiar with it, look up the the term Chernobyl worm, and it's pretty fucked up. It basically the worms are like. A thousand times their size. They're huge. Yeah. And these are like earthworms. These are earthworms that are like horror movie size. Gigantic. Like, gi worms. Like. like, if your hamster was long and slimy, like, you're looking at that kind of thickness. <laughs> yes. But 
You got so many shows. Game of Thrones, Insecure, Last Week Tonight. I love Last Week Tonight. My Brilliant Friend. I have not read that. I mean, seen that. I haven't either, but Oz. Is, I've seen Oz. Oz is that prison show. I'm not a fan of it because I, I spent a lot of time in juvenile incarceration, <laughs> and I don't understand why it's one of my brother's favorite shows. My brother's Craig. I get why he's is kind of afraid. It's an institutionalized thing. Yeah. Because he really likes Orange is the New Black and Oz. Yeah. Like, it's it's got to be that because I, I can't get it. I don't get it. And then there's Real Time with Bill Maher, but fuck Bill Maher. Uh, the Righteous Gemstones, Sex, Sex in, in the, the City, Silicon Valley, Six Feet Under. I love Six Feet Under. It's my, I don't know, it's like maybe my seventh favorite show about death. <laughs> uh, and then The Sopranos. The Sopranos. And fuck The Sopranos finale. Yes, fuck The Sopranos finale. Secession. True Blood. I, I love, love True, True Blood. Blood. <laughs> Up until about season five ish. I, I don't need know. to I need to finish it though. I, I do need to like sit down and finish the last two seasons. Okay, so this is you haven't finished it, but the last two seasons last three seasons are very controversial in the fan community because they were kind of poorly done, executed. Yeah. But I kinda love them because they're so dumb. I absolutely love True Blood because it's a shit show soap opera. No, that's it's what an I, adult soap opera. That's what I like about it because it's it's literally an adult soap opera, and that's what I absolutely love about it because it's cheesy, it's over the top. Eric Northman is delicious as fuck. Yeah, that was Game and, of Thrones hooking me. It's yeah, a soap opera. Yeah, and. But, it was a problem with watching it high. It took me a while watching it high because I could see the Matrix code behind it and just see that it was a soap opera. I was just like, oh, this but is the, just the, the best thing soap about opera. it was Lafayette, though. Lafayette was okay. That's what kept me watching it. I love Lafayette. You love Lafayette. I absolutely love it. I, and mainly because of the fact, like, one of my favorite scenes was when, like, he's cooking and the waitress, like, kind of, like, like tries to like tell him in a way like they want they want no AIDS or whatever. I mean, I I really was watching for like Eric Northman, a little bit of Sookie. Sookie had her moments for me. Sookie pissed me off. That's just it. I love Sookie because she was a dumb white bitch. I absolutely loved her because she she saw the best in everyone. Well, she, she saw the hope. Like, Sookie well, no. was a dumb white bitch. Well, no offense to dumb white bitches listening or in present company. <laughs> but. Hey! I love Sookie. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Quit trolling me, dude. Don't piss me off. I don't want to be like that. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to make a sound like I was calling you a dumb white bitch. But no offense to any white people present company excluded i just i love suki because of that because oh my god her and eric i absolutely loved it i was so pissed with tara oh you I, uh, no I, I i know she turned into a vampire and then they, i think they killed her right? okay so you know they killed her that's the part that ticked me off too because i love tara and i love tara's like reinvention too a little bit when she like leaves and has like a hot sexy Asian girlfriend in New Orleans and becomes a fighter. I don't remember her Asian girlfriend. I remember a Latino girl. Oh, was she Latino? <sighs> Sorry, I thought she was Asian. Yeah, I could have swore it was Latino. Well, that's how girlfriend. I remember it. But yeah, that's enough about True Blood because we got True Detective up next. I have yet to see that, but I've heard really good things about it. Um, absolutely love season one. Season two is okay. Season three is a return to form. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a good watch. I absolutely love, what's his name? Um, Haymage from fucking Hunger Games. Nice. Uh, I can't remember his name. But yeah, then McConaughey is good too. <laughs> McConaughey is always a delight. All right, all right, all right. But yeah, we've got another good comedy from HBO, Veep. I've seen some episodes of that. That's, that show's really good. I absolutely love Veep. And I'm just saying, if that was the president, if the Veep 
became pre- oh wait did, I believe because she becomes president yeah she's the vice president I believe but yeah but for some reason she becomes president I don't know how far you've seen I haven't seen all of it so don't spoil it. yeah but I would um I I'd be a Monica Lewinsky for that president <laughs> I've got a giant crush for Sarah Jessica Parker uh wait that isn't Sarah Jessica Parker uh, as the oh, main character no. Sorry, Sarah Jessica Parker has the horse face. Why does everybody say that she has a horse face? <laughs> that, like, she's actually not that bad looking. And she really isn't that horrible of a person. Like, I never really understood it. I mean, she has a husband. Yeah, she's cute. So, for a horse face. What the fuck? Why do people say that she has a horse face, though? I mean, if you if you see her from a certain, like... Like, profile angle, like, she kind of looks like a horse. Okay, whatever. I just always thought that was so mean. Even as, like, a kid, and I, and I don't really know why, and I don't, I've never, I'm not, like, even a big fan of Sarah Jessica Parker, Parker you guys. Like, it's not even that. It's just, like, no. I I don't really see it myself. Like, Look. yeah, like, she's, she's, she's cute. I owe but... Louis. <laughs> Louise Julie, Julia Dreyfus. Louise Julia Dreyfus, a apology. I'm a little drunk right now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, well, you, you brought good whiskey. Yes, one of you my... You brought good whiskey. One of my and, clients got me members, Mark. And you brought good Gorilla Glue. That is true. I fucking love Gorilla Glue. But, um, yeah, we've got... After V, we've got... The Watchmen series that just started. I'm actually kind of excited to see see that. I really do want to see it. I've heard so many good things, and I it's one of the reasons I've been avoiding Emergency Awesome's channel. <laughs> like, I just don't want to hear any spoilers. Like, I like what they're doing with it. It's a nice sequel to the comic books, not the movie. Yeah. That, but it's dope, and... Here's another really dope show, Westworld, and then The Wire. I love The Wire, and I just, I love the story, like, one of my favorite stories from that show, because it's based off of a uh, reporter's articles. Yes. Um, was, so there was this one episode where, like, one of the characters jumps from, like, a very high, like, story on, like, an apartment building, and I think they, they made it, like, ten feet or something, and... I was reading the story about how, like, a lot of people thought, like, that kind of cheapened it and because it was supposed to be a realistic show and, like, how could someone survive from that height? And the reporter goes, we shortened it because the actual height the guy dropped at and survived was higher than that. So it was, he was actually jumped about 20 feet or something like that. Uh, but... to like escaping or something and I was just I always thought that was funny that like you think that's unrealistic like here's how where he actually dropped that's 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 crazy I don't know I okay I've only seen the first season and that was when it was put on BT yeah so I I don't know how much I've missed I feel like the BT version is an abridged version of the wire it there it's very very trimmed my we had HBO, I watched the first season of The Wire because we had HBO for like six months. And so me and my mom would watch it. And, uh, my mom really liked it because she liked how realistic it was. And the thing is, my mom is a, my mom used, used to be a prosecutor. She did drug crimes and major crimes and such. Um, and so she liked that a lot of this, like a lot of the procedure and a lot of the the back and forth and the and stuff like that was very realistic. Yeah, I've I've heard that from a lot of people. Like, a lot of people like even even cops say that like, this is this is this is kind of not wholly accurate, but it's really accurate. Yeah. In some ways, it's like I mean, cops will never admit er- everything's accurate <laughs> when it is. Yeah. They'll never admit full truth, even less. Unless they're on stand, and even then it's questionable. Alright, and then we have... After that, we've got uh, HBO Library Movies. So, these are what HBO Go's going to have exclusively 
So this is where I think they're gonna really kick Disney's ass at for for a while. I think so, yeah. This is where they're really going to whoop on Disney. Like, this is gonna be some really like fucked up domestic abuse shit. Like, oh, dude, come <laughs> this on. This is gonna be so bad. So we've got a Star is Born. Um, I'm assuming it's the Lady Gaga remake. I think it is, yeah. Just because is these are gonna it's HBO and HBO super good about new releases. Yeah, they're, they're okay about archive, but yeah, when it premieres, it's gonna have a Star is Born, Aquaman. I'm excited for that. I, love I, Aquaman. I still haven't seen Aquaman. I still haven't seen it. I thought we watched it. Did we watch it? We watched it at my house. I mean, it was. Oh yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, we I watched remember, it at my house because yeah. it was before the Steven Universe movie that had premiered on TV. Oh yeah, yeah. Which that was a dope movie. I don't think it was. I mean, it was necessary, but it wasn't. <laughs> I feel like ah, uh, it would have been better as a host. It was like a half season. <laughs> But then again, I just want more Steven Universe. I know. I think. Well, I think Rebecca Sugar it want, is going to continue with the with older Steven. Well, I love how it's doing the anime trope of a time jump. Yes. And yeah, and HBO Go. When we said this on the last HBO one, is going to have a uh, a new movie for Adventure uh, time. time. Yep. And they're going to be having it as um streaming. They're going to have all the Cartoon Network shit. Yes, so I'm excited for that too. And I think that's why Hulu hasn't updated. But oh, yeah, they're going to have, episodes. after Aquaman, they're going to have Bridesmaids. I love Bridesmaids so much. I like it just because it's about fucking time that we have female doing raunchy comedy. Because... Well, not only that, like, it's actually a very, like, it's a really really good comedy yeah. and it's written by women like this isn't a guy writing it well yeah and it has you can a tell is good and written by a woman because women aren't shallow and two-dimensional because when we insult in our runch economies we insult because yes. women know how to break down other women it is i i i really enjoyed it because like in the meltdown it's just so much I shit the meltdown so no, no. Much my, my favorite shower. part is I, Cause I've 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 been around I've been around wedding bridal fiddle fittings yeah. and women just that emergency having to run to the bathroom I I've I've, I've seen that shit <laughs> and I've seen it be like not that dramatic where she took a shit in the street but I've seen just He's like oh you're doing mad it. dashes because you've been drinking water and not eating for like a week straight so you gotta pee like <laughs> just well, mad dashes well, to the bathroom. My favorite part in the movie was when they're at the shower, okay. and she has that meltdown, yeah, yeah. and then explodes about the giant cookie. Yes. She's like, I know uh, it's gonna it, be it, this it's cookie! It's funny, it's a funny movie. Oh, uh, okay, let, let, sorry. Let's go, because we got Crazy Rich Asians. Yes! That is another good movie. And I have yet to see that, and I've been wanting to see it. I've heard so many good things about it. It is it's really good, and I just want to say I am happy to see more representation of other races that are... <laughs> exactly, and I'm really, really happy to see, like, people actually stating that Asian men are hot guys. They are really hot guys. Like, I don't get the perception that they're not hot. Like, well, seriously. Well, is, is that, I don't know, Asian men have very bad marketing. Because, I mean, you remember when I said that fairies have really good marketing? Yeah. Asians have, Asian men have terrible marketing. And I don't get why, it's because, like, like, all the Asian men that I have fucked are the most sensuous, romantic, sexy men ever. Well, it's the small penis thing. It's well, like, like and that's not true. Yes. It's like, Ooh. okay, Asian men, because I, I look at numbers like this all the fucking time, it's like, Asian men, on average... Are, are about the same as Americans. Five inches. Like, They're about five inches, which, like, is the, which is the same as an American guy. Like, is, Asian men aren't really that smaller or bigger. Or, it's thi like, or, or like not as thick. Like, seriously, people. Like, it, the stereotype needs to die because it pisses me off. But no, like, people do not give Asian men enough credit on their sexiness. They yes. are sexy motherfuckers. But they do eat too much fucking soy. I can't stand soy. 
I don't know about that, but okay. Well, soy in, in men's body, when, in everyone's body, when it breaks down, it, it mimics estrogen. estrogen. It mimics estrogen, doesn't create it. But yeah, but after that, we got crazy, stupid love. Uh, I I don't think I've seen it. I probably have. I don't know. Back in the early aughts when we had HBO, I, I, I spent a lot of time watching rom-coms in the early 2000s. <laughs> It was like early 2000s. I watched HBO for three things. It was like, it was HBO Kids for the black fairy tale stories. Yeah. They had nothing but black comedians and stars and celebrities in it. And I loved that as a kid. Skinamax, all the late night porn, real sex. And then it was like rom coms. Like, like, I love rom coms. I loved rom coms. But yeah. Detective Pikachu. I need to watch that. I haven't watched that movie yet. And you know what HBO has because they're Warner Brothers? What? They've got Harry Potter, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I haven't seen the first one. I don't know. I'm I'm like I'm kind of divorced myself from J.K. Rowling. Oh when man, it comes to Harry the first Potter. one is I I I don't hate to say it, the first one is genuinely fucking good. I haven't seen The Crimes of Grindelwald. I hear it is not as good. Well, I haven't... I mean, I've heard the first one's actually not that bad, and I'm gonna watch it, you know. But the thing is, it's like... I stopped, like, being a, such a big fan as, as I when I was younger. So when it comes to Harry Potter, it's one of those things where it's like, I like it, I respect it, it definitely, like, really inspired me as a child. But, like... There's so many things now that, like, J.K. Rowling's just, like, really irritating me, see, and she's just turning into the next George Lucas. And see, <sighs> I really enjoy watching how to fix videos. Like, I love watching, like, because there's a series of how to fix the cursed child. Yeah. And it just makes so much sense, because I don't know if you read the teleplay, or the play, the, scri- the, the, the script. The script. I haven't yet. Or actually seen it, but yeah, um... So, one of the things that they drop the ball on is Hermione becomes Minister of Magic. Oh. And Harry Potter, Harry's, um, what are the wizards? I can't remember right now because I'm fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, the wizards that hunt. (laughs) Oromancers. Oromancers. So he works for the defensive match. And the, one of the things that they drop the ball on is, um, is their affair. They don't have an affair. They should be having an affair. Why? Harry and Hermione. Okay. I don't know about you, my dear, but do you believe in the theory that Jenny Weasley used a love potion on Harry? Well, I definitely thought that, like, it was really out of left field what? that that he liked Jenny, and that's what really took me out of the book series in general, so that would make sense. Yeah. Because it was so weird. Like, it was after they win the Quidditch match, and I remember it so vividly in my head, where he's like, and he just couldn't resist his emotions anymore, and he kisses Ginny. And I'm like, when did this happen? When was there <laughs> any sexual chemistry between the two? Yes! Like, when When was it? Like, I know he talked to Ginny at times. Because everything before but... that moment you mentioned was looking like we were shipping... Hermione and Harry, yeah. Hermione and Harry, and maybe a tryst with Harry and Cho Chang. Yeah. Well, I was actually... I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was actually in the whole Harry Draco camp... Because I'm a bitch like that, and I love... I well, love, I love them. yeah, well, I was definitely in the... I definitely thought that Harry would have been a perfect boyfriend to Draco. I, I definitely uh. I definitely did smell a lot of, like, like BL, like, chemistry coming off of Draco. A little bit, cause that, because he just hated Harry so much, and that's... And and, the, yeah. You know, the whole thing of, like, you know, teasing the, the, the person... You like, you have a crush John, on... Yeah, but you don't how to understand it, so you're just being mean, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. So that's, no, how, that's I, how I saw it. No, I definitely, I definitely agree with that, and, and I definitely don't rule that out as a possibility, but we've got garbage like the cursed child, 
I, I'm really so disappointed with The Cursed Child because there's so many flaws and holes with it and so many missed opportunities and missed setups. It's like, like one of the fixed videos was like, hey, um, make the villain like some ancient thing, something besides Voldemort. Yeah. Something, an, a witch, a present that existed before Voldemort. Yeah, or like maybe some sort of like artifact or something or or maybe not even something ancient like maybe the the you know people discover the wizarding world like we have the the, the year of the smartphone coming up after the 1990 because it ends in 1999 you can just continue it to that point of like they people are discovering the actual wizarding world wait is 99 really when they're putting the kids on the train so yeah i thought the i thought they put the train kids on the train in 89 no when they when Harry, when maybe, the when the book series ends with Harry, maybe I'm thinking about the books because I could have sworn it was like the books end in '89. No, no, it's '99. The books, the Harry Potter series ends in 1999. The original series. That's I don't what know. J.K. Rowling said. I'm, maybe I'm thinking '80s because there's so much mention of computer games, and that's an extremely British thing. And the Bu the Brits, no, when, adopted home computer gaming long before us. And we've gone way, we've gone on way too long on Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Okay, so uh, okay. next we've got M Night Shyamalan's return to being okay. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch. I need to watch Split, and then I need to watch Glass. I, I have a huge crush. You haven't seen Split. I haven't seen Split yet. I have a huge crush on James McAvoy. I I like Split. I Split has that, some man. holes. Split has some problems, but the problems aren't big enough where you don't enjoy the movie. Well, like, I want to see Split because I hear James McAvoy does a really good job in it, and I have a huge crush on that man. Like, a huge crush on that dude. Like, a gigantic crush on that man. Like, okay, 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 we um, get it. You have a crush on McAvoy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have such a big, like, thing well, yeah, for, for men from the UK. I, I like it. Scottish, it's a Irish, good movie. Because after that, did I skip Detective... I said Detective Pikachu, right? Yeah, you said Detective Pikachu, okay. and then we got on that whole thing on Harry Potter, and then we got on Glass, so Isn't It Romantic is next. <laughs> I have not seen that. Really? You haven't? No. You're not missing much. Okay, I figured not. But then we've got It Chapter 2. I, I can't I can't watch It. It's I don't, you don't like do, clowns? No, I don't like scary clowns. I can watch regular clowns, but scary clowns creep me out. <laughs> they but, just but, really but, creep me out. What about the Joker? Because that's up next. Joker is different, <laughs> okay? Joker is different in the context of that I grew up with him as a villain. Whereas, like, It is, like, this omnipotent being. No, it's, it's a it's an ancient alien. Whatever! It kills people and eats them. Yeah. But well, we got the Lego goo. Lego. <laughs> the Lego. The Lego. Lego? What is the Lego? Uh, the Lego movie 2, the second part. I have yet to see that myself. I haven't, I haven't seen it either. That's, that's, that's another reason. It's like there's so many new releases I haven't seen. And then we have Little. Little. That's a, that's a fun one. Which one was that again? I don't even remember. I'm making shit up. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I cannot remember that shit. I don't either. To save my life. But love well, actually. actually. I actually like that movie. It's really creepy, but it's actually, it's not a bad movie. Um, yeah. Mad Madagascar. Okay, it's so cute. cute the first too. one's okay. Yeah. I, I really like the use of... I like Chris Rock. He did a good job. I like, I like to move it. Because I was a big fan of that song on DDR. It's one of the few songs I could complete on medium. Yeah. Back in high school. Uh, I, I was never a DDR pro. I wanted to be. It was the dream. But I was never a DDR star. No, I like... I like... I like Madagascar. And I actually didn't mind... Like, I think Chris Rock should do more uh, voiceover work. I think he actually could do a good job with it. Well, I mean... He... he the only reason that actors do children's movies is so that their kids can consume it too. Yes, and as long just, as as long as he has young children, he'll do movies. I hope he does, cause like I haven't seen him in anything else for voiceover work besides Madagascar. I could have swore he did something. He's, he's done some things. 
I just can't think of any because um. Because like I kind of I just I don't know I just think he I think he could do more with it. I mean it'd be really cool to hear Chris Rock's voice in an anime. Just saying. Is, oh, him him do an anime. Yeah, that'd be I, cool. I I think it'd be dope to see Chris Rock and uh, an anime like panties and garter belt yeah something like that something that's kind of crazy absurd like that like like it has to be like a crack anime where it's just absurd humor yeah and it has to be completely random yes like yes. i think he'd be perfect for that you know yeah um kind of like uh yeah yeah anyway so then we have notting hill you oh. know it's been so long since i've seen that movie and i actually do like it that movie's not bad I... It's just too bad. Um, okay, so let me tell you a story about my, my, my girlfriend from freshman year of high school. <laughs> okay, so... We, this should be interesting. We were watching that movie. And we were watching the movie and making out. And then she was like, I'm, I'm, I'll be right back. And so she went, did something, and I'm just watching the movie. And when she came back, I fell asleep. Oh, no. She wasn't even gone five minutes, and I fell asleep watching that movie. Dude. Uh, and then we have Rio. Actually, I just saw that for the first time a couple weeks ago. My mom likes birds very much. So she has seen that movie, and I have seen that movie because she likes birds. She loves parrots, specifically, and she has six parakeets. Which I took care of for a year. So yeah, it's like the next couple is like movies I haven't seen and want to see. Shazam, I want to see that. Haven't seen and want to see it. Smallfoot, I kind of want to see that. The town. Um, a friend of mine worked on that. Really? So, yeah. That's cool. I, I say friend, we, we met like seven times and we just hung out and talked shit. He was a friend of a friend really, but he's a cool dude. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say his name, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he worked on Smallfoot, so I kind of want to support that and just watch it. But um, then we have the town that was a Ben Affleck, Casey Affleck. Oh, is that the one where like the bank robber holds a woman hostage and then dates her or some shit? Something like that. It's it's a weird Stockholm syndrome. I it's another movie that every time I try to watch it, I fall asleep just because I was tired. I fall asleep on a lot of movies. The thing is, I don't like films directed by Ben Affleck. I really don't. I really don't like them. What? <sighs> I like films directed by Ben Affleck. I think he's a really good director. I just don't think he should have ever been Batman. He would have been a good Batman if they brought in Terry Terrence McGinnis at the end of Justice League. Like I, f like, I feel like they were gonna go that direction. Like, he was the Terry older- Terry McGinnis? Yeah, like, he would have been, like, the older Batman, and then they would have had Batman Beyond. But no! They're not gonna do that, because they don't- They're still- I just want a Batman Shh. Beyond movie! They're still- They're still not ready to lean heavily into the co more comic book, cartoony aspects of the movies yet they're getting there they're getting more the dc shit is getting more and more comic booky but the thing is when let's go back to batman v superman they didn't they went too far and then they got scared hey you remember you had hey, hey warner brothers hey warner brothers let me give you a deal right now on this okay i love dc comics you have no idea how much i love dc comics my boyfriend here can tell you how much I reference, talk about, and you know, use a lot of stuff with the heroes. I will redirect and rewrite the bad movies for you for free. Just let me do it. So I can make them good, and then we can get on to the gr the better heroes, like maybe, I don't know, Static Shock, Black Canary, you know, Vixen would be cool. You know, stuff like that. Though, Birds of Prey I'm really excited for. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it. I want to see Birds of Prey mostly because... Goddamn fucking toy makers. 
You don't make enough female superhero action figures. Well, it is an adult movie. It's rated R. Yes, it is going to be an adult movie. So, uh, they're not going to so, make many kids Marvel, toys. Disney, for listening, I need me a Mayday Parker action figure. I've been trying to get one since 2000. <laughs> Let me get a goddamn Mayday Parker figure. Okay. I don't. I don't need any other, other Spider Women. I just need Mayday Parker. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, and then we have Us, which I have yet to see, and I've been wanting to see it. Oh yeah, that's the homie Jordan Peele. I love Jordan Peele. Yeah. I have Get Out. Love it. Yeah, no, we actually just rewatched Get Out together. Yeah, I actually joked with him, um, because, like, I, it took me a while for me to introduce him to my parents for a bit, I think it was, like, a year before you met him, right, met them, right? It was, it was at least nine months. And, like, I met his mom, like, right when I came to his house. <laughs> the thing is, my family, like, they're cool. They're good people. Yeah, no, Midget, Midget is cool in all respects of the word. Yeah. It's like, if you mean, does she smoke weed? Yeah, my mom smokes weed. Does, does, does she make edibles? Yeah, she makes edibles. Does she cook? Does she clean? Does she fucking garden? Does she do community work? Yeah, she does every fucking thing. So, yeah, I, I pretty, I, it's weird, because it's such a change, because fucking 12 to 20 I never introduced anyone I dated to my mother <laughs> I think Sarah Sarah B may have been the first one and we weren't even dating at the time like like I just I keep usually keep my my family and my dating life separate but in as, as I became an adult I was just like, fuck it, I'm not hiding anything about myself, doesn't matter, I'm gonna be me, I'm gonna do me, and if you don't like it, you can kiss my ass and keep it pushing. Cool. I had to trap you. <laughs> well, n my parents, they're great people, my sister's the main headache, but I'm not gonna get into that. Um, however, though, like, when we were watching it, there's that part where her parents are acting weird because she brings the black boyfriend over or shit like that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. like, and he even tells her, he's like, are you sure they're going to be okay with me? You, like, you maybe you should let them know. It's a trap, though. You know, stuff like that. So, however, though, like, I, I remember I told him, it's like, when I, when my friends had asked me, like, how come you never introduce your parents to your partners in general? Well, I keep them separate. But when it came to, like, people of color, sometimes my parents would ask really, like, not, like, questions that really shouldn't be really be asked at all, half the time. Like, like, I remember my sister brought over a black boyfriend, and he asked him, <laughs> he asked him, what is it like to be a black man and deaf? Yeah. Wait, he was deaf? He's a deaf black man, and my dad asked him that. And I just remember my mom's jaw dropped, and- Shit, my jaw just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, my dad's really sweet, and he's always really respectful to, no, I, to I, Alex. I really and, like your dad. You know, and like... stuff like that. And this was years ago, but at the time, like, when I was watching the us, us thing and, like, the other, like, the family members of them, you know, interacting with them and stuff, in my head, I'm just, like, thinking, okay, yeah, no, this is why, like, 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 when, like, I always tend to, like, think twice at times, because I don't want them to, to run off because they think I'm that way, you know, that's the thing, and even though I know she was a villain, like, in my head, I always kind of, like, wondered, like, if there was an actual character that I could relate to like that, where it's like, I don't want my partner to see me as that way because I'm related to people that way. Or my family members are friends with people that way, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 I don't know, they got... But after Us is War of the Worlds, which... That was I, an okay movie. It was okay. It was... It was. The ending was so weird. The ending was the weirdest okay. part. Okay. It depends on how you look at it. Because if I look at it from the left, it's like, this is a really fun, dumb action movie. Cool. If I look at it from the right, this is a horrible shit adaptation of 
It's a great fucking book of a New York Times bestseller. It's like, so it's just like, eh. Well, I mean, I didn't like the ending because there's this, there's this part where the, the son, like, goes to fight. And we just think he dies. I, and then he magically appears at the their their mom's parents, well, like yeah. their mom and like I mean, like, I mean not just that, but it's the whole shit. thing that is like, oh, you've got to be sick with some sort of virus for them not to attack you. Well, that was in the book too. I mean, yes, that's that's fine in the book in the in the World War Z book, but the book is I like the book better because it's more like. A p- different people around the world telling their story, yeah, and more of an anthology, and I think that, that could have worked as well as a movie. And would have I feel like that would have worked better. That would have worked. Wait, that would be really cool because they could actually do it now. Think about it. Yes. So think about like when it comes to people telling their stories, like Reddit, for example. Like, what if there was a forum about alien sightings around the world and people are posting their sightings and such? Yeah. Like that would be a dope remake of War of the Worlds. Like, if they were to remake it today, it would actually work better now. Well... That way. I don't know about aliens, but... <laughs> I mean, keep it zombies and just keep it the same fuck... Just literally... They did adapt that. the book. Yeah, I love... Just do a literal one-to-one adaptation of the book. Yes. <laughs> and then, um... Yeah, so now we're on to HBO Max Library Series. Yes, Library Series. So, one of my favorite shows is gonna be... <coughs> Adam's Ruins Everything. I love that show. I love Adam, because Adam comes from where we come from. YouTube. Yes! And I, I YouTube family represents! Anytime YouTube family... Goes on and is successful. I appreciate. I don't hate. I'm not a hater. Plus, they they are really informative. Like, I remember when it first came out as a, I think it was, um, oh, college humor. It was a college humor short. Yeah, yeah. And they were on the beach. That's where he comes from, college humor. And I loved it. There was, like, a beach. He's, like, doing this whole romantic proposal. And then he comes up and he's, like, actually. (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to do a quick tangent. Did you know... Aziz Azari got his start with College Humor, and he played Dalsim in the Street Fighter short series, Street Fighter, 20 years later, or 10 years later. I remember that, yeah, actually. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, even, uh, what's his, fuck, uh, Donald so, Glover, Donald yeah, Glover was in- uh, Derek some, Comedy. Yeah, he was in some YouTube shorts on there, yeah, too. and you know what? I gotta. F- Who the fuck owns the rights to the Derek Comedy movie? Um, oh. Super Team or Mystery Team? Mystery yeah. Team. I I fucking love that movie because it. Have you seen that? Not yet. No, I gotta watch okay, it. Okay, so it's it's basically simplest way to explain Mystery Team and the genius of Derek Comedy and them as a group is it is PG characters in a R-rated world. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So yeah. And no, I love Donald's shit like a that. Co-writer, but yeah, I definitely got to figure out where. By I the can way, watch that. Donald Glover, we're really big fans of you. If you were listening to this and like to be interviewed on our show, please. Yeah. Message and, us. And, and and as a doppelganger, I I I would really really like yes, to hang out with you. That's why I'm kind of dating him. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He he looked like my own personal you. So after that, and here let's pick up the pace because these yes. are all mostly like syndicated shows. Yeah. So we've got Adventure Time. I love Adventure Time. Perfect, perfect, perfect. The Analyst. Yes, Analyst is good. American Dynasties, The Kennedys. That's actually a really good documentary series. And then we have Anthony Beard. Bird- Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain parts unknown. unknown. I love Bourdain. Rest in peace, brother. Aqua Teen Hunger Force. That's such a stupid show. I fucking I, hate that show. I love the show because it's I stupid. I fucking hate it oh so much. God. Fuck you, Shake. Early You're the 2000s. most annoying. Early His 2000s voice is so started annoying. Me. I love watching that show ah! freshman year while doing my homework. I fucking hate that show. Like, freshman year of high school for me was 2003. So, I was. This was when Loveline was still a thing. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. So, I would read. 
record Love Line on cassette tape because it was on radio, and we still use cassette tapes. While I watched Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Okay, whatever. At home with Amy Sedaris. That I love Amy Sedaris actually. I I, I kind of like the show, but I don't like Amy Sedaris. Why? I just don't like her personally. I like what she does. I just don't like her. Why? I just don't know. Something about her just rubs me the wrong way. Ugh. But after that, we got The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. I hate reality TV. Uh, Batwoman. Fucking love it. Okay, so this is a big deal. I love Batwoman. This is a big deal. Batwoman is awesome. Because Batwoman is just premiering on the CW. I know, and I'm so excited. Because I wonder if they're going to do the Hulu thing where, like, they'll... they'll They'll put it up after it airs. Well, I'm wondering, because all the CW shows have been coming to Netflix, like, three months after they finish rapping. So, I'm wondering, will they still come to Netflix? Maybe not. That, we'll see. That makes me super nervous, like... I mean, I might just then cancel Netflix and then switch to HBO, because... The thing is, like, HBO has a lot more things that I've been wanting to see and wanting to watch, series-wise. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to steal Midge's fire stick. Like, I'm going to have to, either for Wait, H it won't be on, it won't be on PS3? I don't think I'm going to ha have apps for PS3. I don't think they're developing apps for PS3 anymore. Oh, no, then I have to plug in my PS4. But I like well, to use my PS3 to play my games. Yeah, but... Well, I'll be getting a PS5. <laughs> so we'll see but yeah it's, it's going to be I don't think we're getting new streaming apps that'd be dope if Sony gave us new streaming apps but I don't think so but after Batwoman we've got the Big Bang Theory I like Big Bang Theory I, I, I like the first season I like the first I like, couple seasons I like, I like Big Bang Theory until ooh, I want to say Leonard and Penny get married well, and I mean, it was it was okay after they got married, but once Sheldon and what's her name, Amy, Amy, Sheldon and Amy move in together, I kind of felt like that was their jumping the shark moment. Well, the main thing is like I I but, actually like started not liking Big Bang Theory after the first season. Well, it, mainly it, because of the fact they never really truly showed. Geek girls, and they made it so that they basically have this narrative that it's impossible for geek men and geek women to have a relationship. That geeks have to have people who have nothing in common with. Like so a relationship like Penny and Leonard would never really survive. They literally have nothing in common half the time. Well, I would make a counterpoint to. There are multiple episodes where the girls are discussing comic books That's stuff. That's true. And they're discussing geek shit. And they're having their own discussions and tangents off to the side, separate from the guys. Now, while it's not well, exactly only, the same... It's very I rare. And then the only time they actually yes, did have a geek yes. woman who actually was like privy to comics, Leonard was trying to cheat with her. I don't know. I feel like they handle geek girls... More realistically than I've seen geek girls handled in media. They no, they're, no, they're more unrealistic. They. Only... I feel like I feel like you are kind of more an extreme case. I feel like geek girls, nerd girls in my in my personal life have been more subtle, more reserved about their geekdom. Well, I, for, I used to be subtle and reserved about my geekdom, but then I got pissed off because all the kids who used to make fun of me jumped on the fucking Marvel bandwagon and thought comic books were cool now. Yeah, so that's it's what like, happened. But yeah, I know. But like, as I'm saying, like, I the, feel like the thing is, no, no one handles it. Handles, I feel handles like it that Big well. Bang does geek girls good. They just don't do it enough. They need to do more geek girls. They do. They need to do more Penny and Amy. And they don't have that centered episodes well, or or something because like I can't even like, actually they need to do a geek girl spinoff Just cancel the men and do a geek, geek girl, girl spinoff like... That's what pisses me off. But anyway, <laughs> so then we have the boondocks, which I actually did like the first couple seasons of I show. love the boondocks. I Like uh, the comic yeah. more, but yeah, yes, I will the comic strips are good 
I definitely, I, my biggest issue with the Boondocks 2005 series, I want to say it started, is that we never get to meet Caesar. Caesar was my fucking favorite character. Caesar was a DJ like me. Like, <laughs> I like Caesar because, like, Huey, it was his, like, it's like, Caesar was Huey's, like, friend, and he was also, like, his, like, like, a guy who helped Huey to, like, have fun, in yeah, a sense. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, Huey was always so serious. And so, like, his, you know, he, Caesar would be there, and he'd be like, come on, let's just, let's just do something. Quit, quit focusing on, on shit, you know? Yeah, so, after that, we've got the Carbonero effect. I love magicians. Magicians are so cute. I'm not the biggest fan of street magicians. I just... I'm just over it, and saying that makes me sound like a hipster. If it makes me sound like a hipster, so be it. I'm over oh, it. You don't, you don't like have a any reactions to magic at all. I don't like people who come up and do magic in your face. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, you don't. Wait, do you? Okay, God, I don't want to sound racist, but like I, I mainly because of the fact I heard this term on fucking. What's his face's show before it got canceled? Um, what's it called? I don't know. Keep moving. It, whatever. So you don't like react over dramatically with magicians? No, I don't really. I just don't. Just don't come do magic in my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The Closer is actually a really good show. Actually, yeah, The Closer is good. I like it. It's it's really good. Um, that's what what's her name? Keter Cedric, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah, actually no, a really she, good show. It's a dope show. I just remember this promos for The Closer with Kira Cedric. It's just so dramatic. I'm just I remember watching a few episodes I'm like this is good. I mean, I would have I was watching something else. I wouldn't mind watching something else, but this is good. Yeah. But we have got the CNN Decade, Decade series. series. Yeah, that's on Netflix right now, but I do like seeing it in decades. Series. Yes, I've watched 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And then we have Conan Travel Specials. Oh, Conan. Um, Conan O'Brien. Team Coco. Yep. After Conan Specials, we've got Dexter's Laboratory. I love Dexter's Laboratory so much! Dee Dee! Oh. Ah, Dee Dee, yeah, get out it. of my laboratory. Love it. But Doctor it... Who! Fuck! Yes, I love Doctor Who. You're gonna have Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. Yes. Uh, Doom Patrol after I, Doctor Who. I really want to watch Doom Patrol. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I watched I, the pilot on YouTube when it was up for free. Yeah. And it was really fucking good. I've heard good things about it. it really I good. can't wait to watch it. And then we have Ellen's Game Game of Games. Okay, so. Is that a game is, show, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's a game show. It, it's running on NBC. Um, I've seen it a handful of times. Midget kind of likes it. Um, she likes it better than some of the other game shows. Um, she likes it better than Chris Hardwick's game show. Um, that's executive produced by LeBron James, where you drop the balls down the wall. Oh, the uh, the the whole like plinko thing. Yeah, she likes it better than that because that one's like she's like it's trivia questions. And you gotta gamble with a ball following? She's like, that's dumb. That's dumb. And I'm like, yeah, mom, that is dumb. <laughs> but Doom Patrol, Ellen's Game of Games. Ellen, I, look, people keep saying Ellen's America's favorite lesbian. She's not my favorite lesbian at all. I think that might be Rachel Maddow. <laughs> Rachel Maddow is my favorite lesbian. Yeah. But, I like it because, um, like, mainly because of the fact I know I would smoke a Rachel Maddow would smoke a bowl with us. It's like Ellen. I'm not the biggest fan of her, but I she's actually, done more for LGBTQA rights than I will ever do in my life. That is true, and like she did get people comfortable with it. However, though, I'm actually a little bit pissed that she was so nice to Bush. Well, no, you know, I'm not like... pissed that she's nice at Bush because she was just being cordial and friendly to another human being, to a pot, to a politician, a former To a guy who committed war she... crimes and had done more against the LGBTQA community. Yes, community but just last... because he did all that shitty shit doesn't mean you should be shitty to him when he's in front of you. But it doesn't mean 
I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it, mainly because of the fact, like, I feel like there's always this thing upon among rich culture where, like, no matter what, you have to be civil to one another because you both make a lot of money. Like, I feel like... Well, I feel it's like not even it's... About, about the money. It's about just being civil because you're a human. That's where I come from. It's just... Well, that's where I come from, too. That's just but my like, thing. It's just being it civil because so you're... so much, though. And what do you expect her to do when he's I... sitting right there next to her? Uh... To just pour her drink on top of her head? Secret know. Service is going to arrest and tackle her. It's like... Well, I don't know. Anyway, yes, anyway. Exactly. Anyway. You don't know. You... Anyway! <laughs> we have... Falling Skies. Skies. I haven't seen that. That's a good show. That's the one with aliens? Yes. And then we have the Flintstones. Flintstones. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Friends. In West Philadelphia. Born and raised. On the playground where I spend most of my days. Chilling and relaxing and chilling. Anyway. Full Frontal Wolf Samantha V. Yes, I love that show. She's so awesome. I wish I could see her every night. Gossip Girl. I haven't seen that show yet. You haven't seen Gossip Girls? No, to be honest, I'm not really into... It's not really a show for you. I don't think you'll like it. You know, I'm not really into that shit. I'm just not... The thing is, like... I, 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 the thing is, one, I'm not I'm not bashing anybody that's into Gossip Girl. I just... I, I'm not really into, like, designer fashion stuff. And I know that show... Like, a lot of people watch that show for that because it had a lot of mention with that. That sort of, like, haute couture sort of stuff. As well as, Coach like... couture, my sweetie. Whatever. <laughs> and, um, uh, like, the whole sort of, like, the thing of the elite and, like, the rumor mill and stuff like that. Like, while that is kind of cool and I like, you know, that would be kind of awesome, I don't know. It's not really my thing. I mean, I enjoyed it. I caught the whole first season on one of those MTV weekend marathons. It was just like, oh, it's Saturday. I'm kind of hungover from a high school party. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to enjoy this. This should be okay. I mean, th and that's the thing. It's like, I, I don't bash anybody that likes it. It's just like, I'm not really into any of that stuff. Um, okay, so what's the next one? Uh, we have The Honorable Woman, which I think it's a British show because I spelled honor with a U. And then... Oh, interesting. Impractical Jokers. Hey, shout out to the homie um, Quinn. I'm not a big fan of that show. I'm not a big fan of the show, but Quinn is the homie. He is a homie of mine. I know him personally in real life. <laughs> Quinn, what's up? Shout out. Good luck with the show. And then we have the Jetsons. Oh, I loved watching the Jetsons when I was younger. Uh and then we have Little Big Shots. I don't know if I ever saw that. Oh, wow. That's that's a Steve Harvey show. It's, it's another NBC show. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun show. It's, it's kids. It's little kids doing, like, crazy talented things, like juggling, oh. um, playing piano, singing, dancing, martial arts. It, oh, cool. It's crazy. It's, a, it, it's, it's the new, like, kids say. The darndest things. <laughs> nice. Because the old one had Bill Cosby. Well, they're doing a new one with a female host. If it's not Tiffany Haddish, I'm not watching it. I think it's Tiffany Haddish. Oh, I'm watching it. <laughs> I think it's Tiffany Haddish, actually. <laughs> it was like, if it's not Tiffany Haddish, I'm not watching that why, shit. Why would you mention her? Like... <sighs> Cause I love, Cause, I love like, Tiffany Haddish. But for that show specifically, babe. Cause she's perfect for that show. I know. She's perfect for that show. That's like the first like casting that came to my mind. It's like, oh, they're rebooting Kiss Say, uh, Tiffany Haddish, <laughs> like, or Wanda Sykes. Oh, Ten wait. years ago, Wanda Sykes would have been dope. Wanda Sykes, yeah, she's Wanda Sykes. Sykes would still be good too. But you're right. Um, but then we have. Uh, Let's see. Oh, and then we have Looney Tunes. I love Looney Tunes! Um, yeah, so the Looney Tunes thing is interesting. Is it gonna be the originals? It's gonna be not just the classics. Oh my god! It's gonna be a lot of Looney Tunes. It's gonna be everything from the Looney Tunes vault. So the the few of you who grew up watching Lunatics Unleashed <laughs> is gonna be there. I'm so excited! It's gonna be there. I love Looney 
Tunes was so much. Like, I grew up on that. I used to watch the Chuck Avery Hour on Looney Tunes um, on Cartoon Network when I was younger. Uh, I remember my father used to have, a, like, a special VHS uh, version of, like, these really old propaganda uh, Looney Tunes animators that they made. And Oh, man. Uh, I love the old propaganda Looney Tunes shorts. I mean, they're not as good as the Disney propaganda shorts, but the Looney Tunes propaganda shorts are fun. Well, my favorite one is Bugs Bunny and the Gremlin. And oh, that's, yeah, and that's I think where, that might be one of my favorites, and, too. And that's where, basically, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Gremlins, it's an old urban legend that the soldiers would do that, like, when they would fly at night, they would see these little beings on the wings, and they would call them Gremlins, and they were supposed to, supposedly, like, mess with the, the wiring and shit. Well, yeah, so... And so he so finds one. Sh- yeah. Let me just interrupt you, because the Gremlins are the the basis of the movie Gremlins 1 and 2. The Gremlins in that movie behave just like the Gremlins from Myth and Lore, where they just, they mess with technology, they interfere, they get in the wires, they gum up the works. <coughs> exactly. And so, like, and so he finds it, and, and of course shenanigans ensue. But that's my favorite of the propaganda ones. Okay, so, <laughs> the next three, I know for a fact, were produced and made by Fox, and aired on Fox Networks. Mad TV. Miracle Workers and the OC. Yes, I've I've seen Mad TV. It's not bad actually. I, okay, so in the nineties as a kid, I was a Mad TV kid. Every Saturday night at ten p.m. <laughs> on Fox Twenty Three. <laughs> no, Twenty Nine. WB was Twenty Three. On Fox Twenty Three, I would watch Mad TV every every night. And then I switched to Toonami <laughs> if we had cable. I watched or, Mad I watched Mad TV and uh, I TV, actually my favorite swear. my favorite sketch of all time at Mad TV was when we just entered Iraq and <coughs> <coughs> no it was a couple years and we weren't fighting the WMDs and they just um. And, they, and Apple was just starting those, like, presentations or whatever. And he's like, this is the iRack. And you can put all your Apple products on the iRack. And the reporters were like, I don't know. It looks really unstable. Should you put your stuff on there? And it was really fun. I like uh, it. It was a I whole mean, allegory. I, I loved it. I love Miss Swan. It was like, so many, so many people who are still working in comedy are... Miss Swan. Got their start. Oh, man. Like, I mean, Bobby Lee... Uh, fuck. So many people. I mean, fucking Key and Peele. Yes. Key and Peele. Both. Key and Peele started that, and I love it. My favorite sketch. Uh, Ari oh. Spears. Look, some, a lot of people, like, just go to the Mad TV wiki, and you'll see, like, all the names. It's like, Mad TV started just as many names of a generation as SNL has. Yeah. Well, like, not only that, like... I, I think the thing is, Mad TV like was not given enough credit. They actually did have some really good sketches on well, there. Well, the problem, the biggest problem with Mad TV is that every year it went on, the budget got smaller. Yeah, and that was one of the big problems of Mad TV. But it was pretty competitive. It could have been SNL, better. Though. It could have been better if the budget got bigger. Yeah, but or stayed the same. <laughs> but yeah, after Mad TV, the OC, Miracle Worker, it's um the British Office, the original version of the Office. To be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of the original British Office. I prefer the American series. I'm but the, I prefer the British Office to the American because I well, watched the, it before they made the American. Well, the thing is, it's like I think they should have stopped when Steve Carell left. Like I think they should just ended the TV show there I, because I didn't like the Office after that. I I didn't really watch the Office regularly. But I I started watching regularly when Will Ferrell. Well, the thing joined. was, I liked The Office a bit better because, like, the the thing was, the first year Steve Carell, who was the Ricky Gervais character in the British version, mm-hmm. like he makes him similar to Ricky Gervais, where he's actually kind of a mean guy. Like he's he's a pretty mean guy, and he's not really nice to his employees all that much. Yeah, and he's very pompous. But then, like after that, they kind of like lighten them up a bit. They um. 
they kind of make him, you know, form really good friendships with a lot of the workers and stuff like that. And even though, yeah, he was still a bit of a, you know, of an airhead and a bit full of himself, he did, you know, come from a good place. Just saying. That's what I liked. Anyway. Steve yeah. Carell, you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I love the Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls. Fighting crime. Fighting to save the world. And then Pretty Little Liars. I, I that know. show terrifies me just off of its name and knowing what it's about and what network it started on. What What is it about? I don't get it. Is it a murder mystery? What the fuck is it? Okay, so Pretty Little Liars is about a it's about a bunch of pre-tween little girls like some pre <laughs> okay what is like, it about? They're about a bunch of tw tw like tween little girls and just the secrets and deception and lies that they tell and they do and just it's it's crazy and it's weird and it's just fucked up and it's just maybe kids are doing the shit that they're doing but it's just terrifying to think that they're actually doing this shit. Doing what? What are they doing? What you and I were doing at 12, 13, 14. Actually, I don't know what you were doing. But I, I know, know, what, you I know doing. what I was doing. Wait, like fucking? Like what? I'm confused. Wait, were they having sex? Wait, then who, 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 who was the A person? What? Who was the A person? Like... A, like you get these messages from a person named A. It's like someone send the messages blackmailing them. Okay. And it's just, it's just really, it's just a lot of like lying and bullshit and secrecy and just shit that makes me nervous as someone who may be a parent someday. Uh, like I don't know if I want to watch it or not. I always thought it was some sort of like, like. I don't know, something. Anyway. Yeah, no, it's just... Pride and Prejudice. Ooh. You know, I didn't mind Keira Knightley in that. I think it's the Keira Knightley version. And then we have Primal. Hmm. I don't think I've seen that. Primal. Um, Primal, yeah. That does not ring of even bells. But, but they've got the Rick and, Rick and Morty. Morty. I'm gonna... Ah, oh, fuck, I love Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is fucking fantastic. Fucking love it. Oh, Primal. That's a Nicolas Cage. Okay. Action Adventure Project. Cool. Um, okay. I look forward to... S oh, shit. It's an Adult Swim series. What? Primal. What's it about? Nicolas Cage is in it? What? Yeah. Wait, so Nicolas Cage is going to be in an Adult Swim city series called Primal? Yeah. Or is he in one now? Is is it oh. is it airing now? Um, here, let me read the description. What are you doing, Nicolas Cage? Primal follows a caveman named Spear. In the show's production notes, in the voice of, in the and voiced by Aaron Laplate, a forbidden hunter, or formidable, sorry, formidable hunter, at the dawn of evolution. And a female Tyrannosaurus called Fang in the show's production notes. What the fuck are you doing, Nick? Uh, Nick, let oh. us know what you're doing. This On is, the brink this of is... extinction, brought together by tragedy into an unlikely partnership as they sur fight, and sur fight to survive the violent creatures that also live in the prehistoric world. Um, the first season will consist of 10 episodes, and the second half will air in 2020. Um, okay. Um, yes, please. I, I do want to watch that. Um, it is guaranteed five seasons. Nicolas Cage. Um, thank you. Like, we need to talk. Thank you. Please come on our show so we can interview you. Thank you. That like, would be dope. I want to ah! see this shit. I do too. Nicholas you have to be a dinosaur. I know. What the fuck? Ah, that's amazing. I love this. <laughs> so I love dope. this. Nicholas Cage, you don't. You have to understand, we're kind of like secret fans of you. We're like those people <sighs> that like, 
love what you do. And we're like super excited. I love what he chews scenery. I know. I want to watch Face Off now. So do I. <laughs> Oh my god, him chewing scenery against Josh Travolta? Yes. Uh, oh, oh no, no, no. I actually I actually I absolutely love him in Kickass. Uh, uh yes. Yes, Kickass. Yes. yes. But Ooh. yeah, so after Rick and Morty, you've got Rizzo and Io. That's actually a really good show, but it really sucks that that guy dies. That I guy. I only know it for the memes. The show is really good, but the guy who played the famous Jet Jets, Jet Jet Jackson, which I'm actually surprised oh, is Lee not. Oh, Lee Thompson Young. Yeah, he was on that show. He was on that show before he committed suicide. He committed suicide. Yeah, he committed suicide. Well, I feel like I knew this and forgot. Yeah. But... So yeah, he was. He and that's not even on on Disney. I realize that now. They don't even have that on for Disney streaming. Hmm. We never mentioned that. That was a Disney show. Yeah. You're I right. actually loved that show. Well, I just assumed it wasn't going to be a launch title. Well, there I were mean, a lot of Disney Channel original series that weren't launch titles. That's true. So maybe it, maybe it might be in the library. It might be in the library to come. Yeah, but... I feel like that might be something that might be saving for February. Because I actually really loved that show, and I had such a crush on him <laughs> as a kid. Such a crush. Oh, um, yeah. And then we have Robot Chicken, which I actually like that show. I love Robot Chicken because we got Samurai Jack after that. I love Samurai Jack! Ah! Oh, I love it. Oh, great shows from Cartoon Network. And they're so good. But after Robot Chicken, Samurai Jack, Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Yes. Yes. So any all new episodes of Sesame Street coming will be airing on HBO Max first. And then it will be on PBS. Then we'll be on PBS. Yep. Um, I don't know what the delay is, but they will be premiering on HBO I first. I think they said it's like a month or something. Yeah, which is totally cool. Well, Because the they're was, not taking Sesame Street away from children. Well, no, they're not because HBO actually bought it. The owner actually bought it for the sole purpose so that it could still play on... PBS and yes. not have to worry about funding. And that was the main thing because during the second uh, Obama election, uh, Mitt Romney was saying he was going to cut funding to PBS and, and Sesame Street. And so HBO at that time bought it and said that we will we'll still air it on PBS, but it will be a delay. Yeah, but PBS is always having, like, charity drives and playing concerts. Yeah. It's like, I remember I've caught, like, so many, like, great shows. Like, I caught Thin Lizzy Live when they were asking for money. Yep. Um, I'm a TBT member, so I, I do I do donate. I love PBS, actually. I, I, I did a few of their panels back when I was doing work with the British Shelter and Yay. Y-E-A, the <laughs> youth empowerment something. But, like, the thing is, um, what was I saying? Right, right, right. Um, like, PBS in general, like, I actually, I do like PBS, and it's always commercial free. Yes. That's what's great about it, is, like, it's a free channel that is commercial free stuff. So you're not interrupted by commercials. No, it's, I mean, they're, they've been, they've always been viewer funded. It's like, PBS telethons have been going on for 70 years now. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's really cool is like when you can watch the adult stuff like Masterpiece Theater. Oh, I love Masterpiece Theater. Yeah. Like, yes. And like Sherlock and stuff, and then it's commercial free. You're watching it all the way through. No, it's like, that's how I originally got into Doctor Who as a kid. Yep. Was PBS. Was watching um, the crazy hippie Doctor Who <laughs> from the 70s. Yes. But, and um, then we have... The Smurfs. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. But cool. Classic Smurfs. And then we have Hanna South Barbera. Park. Barbera. South Park? How South Park, Steven Universe... I love Steven Universe. We This are Life the with Gems. Lisa Ling. Top the Gear, BBC. United Shades of America, Camel Bell. The West Wing. Hey, love The West Wing. I like that show, too. And then whose line is it anyway? Whose line? 
I'm not the biggest fan of Who's Lying, but it did kind of pique my interest once they picked up Aisha Tyler. I mean, I, I, I like Aisha Tyler, but um, she she's kind of borderline on cooning sometimes. <laughs> like, like, sometimes you need to go hang out with Kanye, Aisha Tyler. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, so we're gonna have to. We, we finished up at least <laughs> part most of, it. of it. Most of it. I mean, I don't know. We're at the library movies now. And I. So, oh, wait, yeah. no, that's the. That's like the only thing left. Should we just, like, get those out of the way? Sure, library movies. Yeah, I mean, because then yeah. we'll just make it like a two hour thing. Sure, sure. Okay. We'll get rid of the library movies. Um, so we've got 13 going on 30. Awesome. 2001 A Space Odyssey. We have to watch that tripping. We have to watch that tripping. We have to watch that tripping. Anyway. Austin Powers. I love that International movie. International Man of Mystery. The Bodyguard. And I will always... Sorry. Casablanca. I love that movie. Chariots I... of Fire. Citizen Kane. Good movies. Citizen Kane. I'm glad they're having some good classics on there. Yeah, Rosebud, all day, every day. The color of purple. Hey, Whoopi's Oscar nod. First Oscar nod. The Conjuring. Ooh, scary, scary shit. I like The Conjuring. Kinda. And then we have Dangerous Liaisons. That's a super dope movie. <laughs> and Dark Knight. Yes, love that. DC films in general. Dope. I know there's gonna be a Snyder cut. The Sn okay. I'm I'm still on the fence about the Snyder cut. I'm I'm still wondering if he's trolling or they're really putting the Snyder cut no, out. No, there's a Snyder. I it doesn't surprise me that there is an actual Snyder cut. I I feel like he's trolling. I feel like it's a troll. It's not. I it's feel not like a, it's a troll. Sweetie, no, it's not a troll. Believe me, in the I I know I know when people aren't lying and believe me, I'm well, pretty sure that okay, so it's already completed. So no, it's great about the DC films though, because I'm pretty sure this includes all of their animated films. Yep. So, it includes all their anime stuff, animated stuff too. Yep. That's that's great because I think I, uh, I, I I'm hesitant to admit this, but I have probably stolen every animated DC movie starting like 2006 to 2015, 2014. Like, <laughs> but, like, I love those movies, but I, I, I'm too broke. Okay, anyway. We've got The Departed. Love that movie. Scorsese, you're awesome. I just watched, um, because that movie is based off of Whitey Bulger. Yep. So I just watched the Johnny Depp movie, Black Ooh, Mask. Oh, yeah? Um, I, I fucking love, hate Whitey Bulger. Well, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a, a guy. He's a very interesting guy. He's very fucked up. He, I mean, he used the cops to get rid of his competition. And I kind of have to respect that. <laughs> I kind of have to respect that. I, but at the same time, you have to, like, kind of pity him because he was experimented on. Yeah, well. They, they pumped him full of LSD and, like, tried to, yeah, anyway. Yeah, well, I give no fucks about that because we have the Gremlins 1 and 2. I like both. Oh, uh, I'm curious about Hairspray, because it doesn't say if it's the original or the remake. I prefer the original. I definitely do prefer the original. Ricky Lake was really good in that. Ricky Lake! Oh my god, I feel old. What was... Ricky Lake, that was the mom, wasn't it? No, no. She, she played the girl. Oh. The mom was played by a drag queen. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't fucking. Really... The mom was originally look, played by look, a drag look, queen. Look, look. No, this I, is no, this I'm was gonna be, actually. Look, I'm gonna just say this. I have not seen that movie since middle school, so I don't really remember Hairspray okay. from the '90s. So you're familiar with black exploitation films, right? Yeah, I know. So there's also gay exploitation films too. Yeah. And so Rick, like Hairspray, was one of kind of like the very few. Um, gay exploitation films that would that became mainstream it was like directed you know and it was like produced and everything like that i never thought that movie was gay for once it was it was produced by like i think like a gay company or something so uh, and like I and the mom thought... was the mom was played by a drag queen in the in the broadway show anyway so yeah yeah we've got happy feet that is fucking directed by the same director as mad max 
I like. It's like I I I love that movie just because of that. But we've got the shit ass unnecessary. We did not need this Hobbit trilogy. Iron Giant, Kill Bill, I love Volume the Iron One Giant. and Two. Kill Bill. Iron Giant, all the feels in the world. Kill oh. Bill, love it. Last Samurai. Um. Fuck Tom Cruise. <laughs> Lord of the Rings trilogy. Dope. Magic, Magic Mike. Mike. Ooh, nummy, nummy, nummy. Ah, I love Magic Mike. March of the Penguins. Oh, yes. Matrix trilogy. Yes. Million Dollar Baby. Oh, yes. Who else has seen that movie? Miss Congeniality. Love it. I love Miss Congeniality. Mona, Mona Lisa, Lisa Smile. Smile. Oh. I love that movie. Ocean's Eleven. I love it. It's one of my favorite con movies. I love it so much. Yes, and I'm just going to assume it's the fucking remake because the original is a shit show and is unwatchable. The original o Ocean's Eleven? Yes. Have you seen the original Ocean's Eleven? No. Oh, it, no, it I've has seen the, Ocean's Eleven. It has the Rat Pack, so it's Sammy Dean Martin. Oh, I haven't seen the original. No, I've only Frank. seen the remake. Yeah. Like, the original is, is such a fucking train wreck and shit show, and it's like, how did you guys actually put together a movie? It doesn't really make sense. But yeah, moving on. Um, the right stuff, Risky Business. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. I wonder if it's the live action, then. Yeah, no, it's, I'm assuming it's live action. The Shawshank Redemption. Or it could be the whole... Um, uh, movie library. series, I w that would be really cool if it was like the animated movies. I, that'd be cool, but I, love I think the it'd be better movies. if it'd be like all the classic Scooby Doo animations. My favorite animated Scooby -Doo movies. My favorite Scooby Doo movie is the witch one. I oh, like the that. witches are fun. The witch, yeah. Um, especially any any Scooby Doo movie that has the Hex Girls band in it. I love Hex good. Girls. But yeah, Shawshank Redemption, The Shining. Space if you want to jam. Space Jam. I like Space Man. Spirited Away and the entire Ghibli film collection. I love Miyazaki movies. Uh, I love this. I love this because Disney did not get Miyazaki. They did not get Ghibli films. They did not get streaming rights to, to Ghibli films. They still have theater distribution rights. Yes, now. they still have theater distribution <laughs> and... Um, physical media. They still have physical media. They still have film, but they don't have streaming. And I love that because I'm really hoping my favorite, my favorite, favorite Miyazaki film. I still own it on VHS to this day. Kiki's Delivery Service is. I on love it. Kiki's Delivery Service. I love Kiki's Delivery no, Service. I love it because so it's just it's slice of life. It's just a slice of life movie about a girl who's a witch and she delivers shit. <laughs> I just love it because it's simple and it's fun and it has Phil Hartman as the cat. My Rest in peace, Phil. My favorite is uh, uh, Princess Mononoke. It has a really good message about like not everything is black and white. Environmentalism. But it's another movie that's compared to that can be compared to Princess Mononoke. Not Princess Mononoke. Fern Gully, Dances with Wolves, Well, no, Wolves, no, 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 it, it's, it's more than, it's not, it's more than just the environment, it's more yeah. of just, like, every issue is, is not, is, is not just black and white, there's no, yes. there's no bad guy to it, because when he goes to Irontown, the thing is, as we all know, the people are actually really hardworking people that just yeah. want to live there. Um, and everything like that, but then there's the animals, and the thing is, you know, a lot and of the they, women there are liberated land. whores. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, it's, it's good, it's a fun, it's fine, because I remember when it was on Showtime, I would watch it every time it was on Showtime, it's, it's a very respectful movie, like, but that's all of Miyazaki's works, everything he's done is respectful, but after that we've got Watchmen, Yeah, that's the movie this time, but... <laughs> we got a series, we got a movie. It's all gonna be. And there then for you. Wonder Woman, fuck yes. Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot, I have such a huge crush on. And then we have When Harry Met Sally. That's a good movie. Yeah, and The Wizard of Oz. I love The Wizard of Oz. Yes. I mean, yeah, HBO is definitely gonna kill it. 
and they're definitely gonna steal me away. Or I'm it's like, there's no way, there's no future where I don't have HBO Go and Disney Plus. Like, there's no future I see where I don't have access to both of them somehow. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like I'm probably gonna like ditch if I can have Netflix and HBO at the same time, then I'll do it. But I'll probably switch to HBO because I know I will watch that stuff more than Netflix. Well, but at the I, same time, I do like a, a Netflix original content, so there's that. Well, I'm uh, I feel like Midget is not going to get rid of Netflix anytime soon, so I'm always going to have Netflix. <laughs> um, uh. But HBO Go and. Disney Plus, uh, shut up and take my money, but I don't have my money yet. Well, it's so. HBO Max. HBO that's the, Max. That's what it's yes. called. Yes. I, I, that's the issue with HBO right now, because they've got five different format well, platforms. Well, right there's, now... There's five ways to screen, stream just HBO content. Well, HBO Go is tied to your cable package. So if you have it part of yes. your cable package to watch through your television, that's HBO Go. HBO Now is... Just, just HBO content. Yes. And that's strictly HBO content, not the not the, the, the movies, not the additional movies and stuff like that, like their TV shows and stuff. Yes, and HBO Max is everything in the Warner catalog. Plus HBO. Plus HBO. HBO's catalog, because HBO is a Warner-owned company, so you've got all those shows. So, like, and so I think I would probably use HBO Max to the fullest, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm gonna definitely have... I'm gonna find a way to pay half of HBO Max with you. <laughs> well, what I'm gonna do... I mean, if you can help me pay for half of HBO Max, then I can keep Netflix, which would be good. Because I would like to keep Netflix. Well, I mean, you don't really have to keep Netflix. Well, I like the original Netflix I, I content. I have Netflix. I, I have know Netflix. what Bridget and I are sharing the Netflix. Oh, yeah, you're sharing with Bridget. So, yeah, I will, um... Well, yeah, you're on, you're on there because you're sharing with Bridget. But, well, I mean, I also watch it, too. But HBO Max, I will definitely find a way to pay half of that. Disney Plus... I'm, I've got to find another partner that has it. Uh, That's the great thing about polyamory. <laughs> you can always have, find someone to share with. <laughs> yeah. The best four parts. All the streaming. All the streaming is mine. I mean, that's how it's going to be. It's yeah. Like, I mean, I might have to just make some friends just for the streaming <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, and like, guys, we're completely serious on this. Like, right. if you date polyamorously and you fuck them, you have total right to be like, yo, let me get let me get the deets okay. on your streaming shit. Okay, so yeah, yeah, we need to rewind real quick to something we said earlier. What's that? Um, The Barry Show on HBO is not about Barack Obama. It's about Bill Hader. It's the Bill Hader serial killer series. Oh, I love Bill Hader. Yes. I want to fuck him so badly. He's so cool. He's so funny. I don't know. I I'm I might be a cuck for that. I might be a cuck for you that. You might be a cuck for that? I mean, come on. He's super funny. He is super funny. Oh, okay. Like, oh, he's a... Oh. He's that type of funny that's like... Like, he would make the sex funny in some way. And, like, see, and that's funny. why I would be a cuck. <laughs> that is the one time I would voluntarily be a cuck. <laughs> uh, so, Bill Hader, just putting it out there for you, bud. Anyway. Okay, so, before we go. Yeah, before we get There's going. the Motivation 2020 playlist up on the page. Yes. Also, like, please, please leave comments. Like, we've been seeing upticks and views and stuff, but we'd like to, s to see if people leave messages. Well, no, here's the thing about my channel. <laughs> On a quarterly basis, I average about 800 views on all my legacy content, but no, con no comments. It's like, I get lots of views, 
but I'm not monetized. I get lots of views, but no one comments. Like, but that said, there's also a discussion tab on the profile page. I don't yeah. know if you're using YouTube on PC or phone, but there's that discussion tab. Please hit that. There's a few questions, lots of places where you can interact. Um, and uh, we and in January, we're going to be premiering a new podcast with my new friend, uh, Betty Apollo. Um, so... Be, you'll be li- be on the lookout for that. That would be through our Patreon that we'll be posting. Yes, yes. So, one last thing. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Hit that bell if you want when to know when our awesome voices are going to be up on the internet. Yes, please, please, please hit that notification bell. We would love for you to join the notification squad. And, you know, we do like to go and do things together outside of where we do our stuff. So follow our Twitters when we say we want to do meetups because we'd love to meet people who listen to us. Yes, yes, yes. We're always doing public meetups. So that said, have a good night, morning, afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. (laughs) Peace. Yes, later.